Hey everyone, welcome back to channel. It's Jeff Lee from Return Realty. And today we're diving into a major update that's got everyone talking, Canada's new immigration target. Whether you are a homeowner, a prospective buyer, or just keeping an eye on things that are happening in Canada, this news could have a huge impact on our economy, housing market, future of the country. We all know immigration has been a key driver in Canada's growth, but with the federal government shifting their focus, there are a lot of questions about what this means for permanent and temporary residents and how it might affect you. To help break this all down, I brought in a special guest today, an immigration specialist who's been following these changes closely and give us a deeper understanding of what's happening behind the headline. Hey, Alex. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Very good, very good. Um, thank you very much for coming today. Can you tell us about who you are? Yeah, um, my name is Alex. I've been working in the immigration industry for the past 10 years across various roles and organization. Over the course of my career, I had the opportunity to obtain my immigration consultant license, which has been a natural progression for me as an immigrant myself. So coming full circle, I find immense satisfaction in helping others navigate the same challenges I once faced. Okay, so let's move into the first question. So there, there was announcements this morning. And uh, so what specific changes are being made for Canada's uh, immigration targets? I think it can be boiled down to one word, which is reduction. Okay. Um, reduction in permanent resident targets and right. reduction in uh, temporary resident. Now, the mm -hmm. uh, number of new permanent resident in Canada would admit annually would decrease significantly. The target for 2025 is set approximately at 395,000, which is a 21 reduction from the previous planned 500,000. 21%. 21%, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. Um, further cuts will follow in subsequent years, with the target mm -hmm. dropping around 380,000 okay. in 2026 and 365,000 by 2027. The wow. government is also planning to cap the number of temporary residents. Okay. Such as international students, which already happened in the uh, right. beginning of this year, right. and temporary foreign workers. Um, mm -hmm. The goal is to reduce the temporary resident population by about 445,000 over the next few years. So for, for international students for 2024, they, they limited to 500,000, which was about half of what, what we had into mm -hmm. 2023. So you're saying that all temporary um, the visas together is going to be 485? Um, that's yet to come, but I think okay. that's what the government is projecting at the moment. Right. So we'll um, have lesser number of uh, international students. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. okay. Then the question is, I don't know if this is something that you can, you can answer, but uh, the liberal gov government has been an advocate um, on you know, having a new immigrants in Canada. Why did they all of a sudden um, shifting their gears and trying to reduce the number of immigrants to Canada? There's many different reasons, um, mm -hmm. but I think echoing what happened earlier on this year, it's um, been framed as a housing crisis or mm -hmm. a housing shortage of sort. Right. Um, again, one of the primary drivers of uh, this new policy is a shift in uh, is the strain that high immigration levels have placed on Canada housing market okay. with rapid uh, population growth fueled by immigrants. Demand for housing has surged, contributing okay. to shortage of affordable house and rising rent prices. I mean, the government believes that reducing immigration will help ease pressure on the housing market. Hmm. Okay, so basically the federal government is pointing their fingers at the, the housing crisis that we're having right now at the moment it's looking like <laughs> that. <laughs> okay okay good enough uh so then we can go into the next question um so you you said that the changes will happen in 2025 so what happened to the the temporary workers that are in canada right now are they going to have hard time renewing their visas maybe now there's the canadian government plans to significantly cut the intake of temporary residents okay including international students and foreign workers uh, okay. this could be more difficult to obtain a study or work permit as there's cap on the number of visas issued. Okay. Employers will face tighter restrictions on hiring temporary foreign workers, particularly in areas of high unemployment for low wage positions. This could limit job opportunities for prospective foreign workers and make the process more challenging for employers who rely on temporary foreign worker programs. 
Okay, so th this actually can lead to the next question. How will they impact the uh, the application process for both permanent and temporary residents? Yeah, so the the reduction in the annual permanent resident target from five hundred thousand to three hundred ninety five, starting in two thousand twenty five, will mean fewer spots available for applicants. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this will lead to increased competition, especially in popular immigration streams like express entry. Oh, um, so then maybe the points may go up. Exactly. Maybe. Applicant may need higher comprehensive uh, ranking system scores mm -hmm. to be invited to apply. Right. But at um, this moment, we don't have any details. We really don't have any details. Okay. Um, this is just speculation at the moment. Okay. So in your opinion, how will the reduced immigration target uh, affect Canada's ability to meet the labor market demand in you know, various sectors? Well, Canada has historically relied on immigration to fill gaps in its workforce, right. mm -hmm. particularly in sectors such as healthcare, construction, okay. technology, and engineering. Right. Reducing immigration targets could exasperate shortage in these key areas as fewer oh. skilled workers will be entering the country. Okay. So, for example, Canada's healthcare sector has been heavily relying on foreign trained doctors, nurses, and other professionals to address oh, really? the staffing issues. Okay. So, this may actually lead to a bigger problem. We might not have enough health professionals in the market. And at the same time, um, the federal government is saying that they're trying to tackle the housing issues. But if you don't have enough workers to build homes, I, I don't know, we might run into even Bigger, bigger problem. problem, yeah. Okay. I mean, in, in the long run, Canada may need to adopt other strategies to fill mm. uh, labor market gaps. Oh, okay. Right. Such as domestic training, education programs, encouraging higher participation rates okay. amongst underrepresented groups, okay. or just immigration pathways to prioritize high demand sectors. All right. Uh, we're going to have to see what happens. Okay. Then the next question now, what advice would you give to pr prospective immigrants who are planning to apply for permanent or temporary residency under the previous um, immigration levels? Well, I would say with the reduction of permanent residence spots starting in 2025, apply as early as oh, okay. possible. Okay, yeah. don't um, wait for it. Don't wait, don't wait for it. next year. Exactly. Competition for those spots will increase significantly, even um, with temporary residence as well. Okay. So if you're eligible now, do so before the target comes into effect. Um, that will maximize your chance of success. Now I have the uh, last question. Um, do you anticipate a shift in the type of immigration program Canada will prioritize as a result of this policy change, maybe? Maybe the economic class immigrants, so particularly those with high demand skills. Um, the government will probably continue to prioritize those individuals. Okay. So programs like, again, Express Entry, Provincial Nominee programs, uh, okay. which target skilled workers, are expected to re remain central to Canada's immigration strategy. Do you have the uh, particular areas of expertise that you, you are most uh, mostly are practicing in that our viewers may be, uh, if they have any questions that you can they can reach out to? Feel free to reach out. Um, actually, in the last, I would say, decade, I've been working as a uh, temporary foreign worker student, uh, LMI exempt. So oh, I see. those are our four corporate clients. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you very much for coming today. And guys, I will leave Alex's um, contact information on the description. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach him out. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, thank you, everyone. I'll see you on the next video.